Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Chef Nate again, cooking from home. So one of the things I wanted to share with everybody this weekend is a tradition that's kind of been going around uh, in, in my household. And then when I got married, we, we adopted it into our new household. And it's just we, bagels and lox on, on Sunday, on, uh, on specifically on Easter, right? It's just one of the things we've always had. Uh, and always done and, and given in kind of our circumstance about not uh, not being able to go out and get them uh, We figured hey, you know what? Let's just make them uh, You know, so I, I've got a really great simple recipe for for bagels um, We're gonna be doing locks in this uh, series too. more grav locks, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll do a quick like at-home smoking um, Hack too, uh, but more to come. We're gonna focus on bagels this morning All right, so First and foremost, with baking, right? Sabine, say good morning. Hi, uh, good morning. We, it, it's super imperative that, you know, with baking like anything else, get, get your mise en place set, right? So you're not, you've got your flour and then you gotta stop and then you've gotta get this. Just get everything ready. We've got everything kind of dialed in here. We've got our flour that's already been measured out. Uh, this is bread flour. It's a, it's a more glutinous flour. And anytime you're making bagels, that chew comes from the development of gluten, uh, right? So some flours have a, a tendency to uh, de develop a, a stronger strain of gluten uh, in it, and bread flour is uh, one of those that you can use. So we've got the flour measured out, we've got uh, dry active yeast ready to go, we've got salt, uh, and then we've got sugar. So what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna activate the yeast uh, with the sugar. We gotta feed the yeast, as, as most bakers would say. Uh, and then we're, we've got the salt here already measured out, and I will be posting this recipe online. Um, so that you can all have access to it. This is just kosher salt. We're gonna add this into the, the flour right now and just be done with it. Okay, so to activate the yeast, very simple. The, the recipe calls for 300 milliliters of water, or about a, a uh, you know, I'm just using an at-home measuring, uh, <laughs> measuring, glass measuring cup here. Uh, I'm gonna get warm water going. A, a good temperature is about 110 degrees. You don't wanna get it too hot, you don't wanna get it too cold. Um, it's kind of like a nice, nice bath. You know, I've got a pretty simple all five digital just thermometer here, perfect. right? You want it perfect, right, Sabine? Yeah. Want it perfect. I like my blue. Mine. Yeah. Okay. Still. Here. Hot. Yeah. We've got our our, our water measured out here, and we're gonna add about a quarter of it to this mm -hmm. and we're not gonna we're gonna let it set uh, we're gonna save the rest of the water for when we make the dough but we're gonna set the timer okay, and we're gonna fast forward five minutes so we'll see you in five minutes one okay hi everybody welcome back so as we've we've done here we've just activated our yeast it's been about five minutes um, we've got our flour. I, I'm going to use a KitchenAid to knead this thing uh, today. You can absolutely do it by hand if, if you'd like a good workout. Um, I like my bagels to have a little bit of a chew, so I'm going to use the, the kind of the extra horsepower in the KitchenAid to, to, to knead this, right? So I've got a little well going on here. Yep, my, as you can see, homeschool is full in effect at the, the Barrio house. So I'm gonna get this on the kitchen and make sure it's attached. I'm gonna lock it. <laughs> Honey, can I help you? Well, I'm trying you? not to pinch her fingers. Okay. All right, we're gonna slowly just kind of start to incorporate this a little bit. And then I've got the remainder of my water here that I'm just slowly gonna drip in. And now you may need, and this will, in the recipe it will say this, um, to incorporate a little bit more water, but I would do that tablespoon by tablespoon. Go. All right, so we're gonna just continue to make this right now. We've kind of got to start in the, the form of a shaggy dough, so to speak. And once it starts, once it starts kind of coming together, uh, we're going to continue to knead this, um, probably for about ten minutes, um, all in. 
and then it, once it starts really to form the ball, I will you do a little little bit by hand. I think it's good practice uh, to to kind of feel where the the dough is developing and, and and what it's supposed to feel like. All right, so I'm gonna stop stop this. I'm gonna pull it together and then start it again. And this dough right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it. Like I said, only about a tablespoon. We're going to continue to do this and we'll get the ball uh, made and I will see you uh, all shortly. To get Go. <laughs> hey everybody. Um, so here's where we, we've landed out of the, the KitchenAid. And like I said, I, I do like to, to do you know a couple minutes of this by hand. One, I think it's important uh, for, for you to know what the dough feels like when it's kind of really coming together. and. and and it's also a little humbling, <laughs> you know, as you're standing here kneading this and basically what you're kneading is you're, you're basically, you're taking the palm of your hand, similar to making pasta dough, no different. And you're just rolling the dough in and over itself, right? One, two, it folds, it folds over again and it folds and you're really just working it. And I'm gonna to continue to knead this until it's smooth, until the dough is smooth and uh, pretty elastic -y. Probably, you know, it probably spent about six minutes in the KitchenAid and I'll do the, the remainder, uh, remaining four minutes or so by hand. So, and then once that, once I finish this, what we'll do is we'll get into, I've already got a, bowl ready. I've just got some extra virgin olive oil in there. We'll coat the dough on this. We'll make sure the olive oil is up around the sides. And one of the benefits of, uh, of being in the south is uh, my, my front porch acts as a proofer, a proofing box, right? So uh, it's pretty hot this morning. Uh, there, there's a lot of humidity in the air. I'm going to cover this with a damp towel once it's in, once it's in here. Uh, and I'm going to put it on the, uh, on the porch and let it rise. And it's going to double in size. We'll take it and then we'll, we'll bring it back in and then we'll, we'll finish making it. But that's going to take about an hour and a half. So uh, in, that, in that process, we'll end up prepping the grav locks or the, the locks. So, all right, we'll, uh, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, welcome back. So uh, we, we did the kind of secret magic of uh, Food Network. Uh, we've got our dough. It's, uh, it's, it's been proofed. It, as you can see, uh, it's, it's pretty airy. Um, I've already punched it once, uh, taking it out of the bowl. Now, the, re the recipe calls uh, to divide into eight equal pieces. I actually like bigger bagels, uh, personally. So I'm gonna divide this into six pieces. I'm going to, to roll it out, um, just cut it in half gently, right? Now you can use a scale to, to be precise. Um, we're going to take these right here. These are going to be some big, bigger, bigger bales. <laughs> we got a little tester there and we're going to take that same damp towel that we had and we're going to kind of, we're going to keep them covered, uh, while we're working on them. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to roll, circle them, uh, or, or make balls out of them. Uh, and then we're going to let them rest again, and then we're going to form uh, form the bagel shape, um, which is literally poking a hole in it uh, with with your finger. Um, we're going to blanch them, 
uh, in boiling water. And I, as you can see, I, I set this up ahead of time, right? I've got a pot, I've got enough water in there so they can drop. Um, we'll, we'll take a quick video of this too while we're doing it. Um, you, you poach them one minute on each side. And I, I do use a timer for this, or you know, if you get an Apple Watch, whatever it is. Uh, but definitely time it, you wanna make sure they're cooked. Um, at that point, you take them out, you let them rest for a second, you put your seasoning on it, uh, and then in the oven they go uh, for about 20 minutes at 425 degrees. Um, and about halfway through that 25 minutes, you, you wanna spin it. I, my oven can be a little bit, uh, how, how would you say unpredictable on some sides, right? Uh, that just happens. So back to, to, to rolling it, right? Similar like you're making a, a roll. Um, if anybody took uh, Amy, uh, our baker at, at the bluff, her bread making class, right? She always says like, get your cat paws up uh, and, and use this part of your hand uh, to make and form the dough. It's like making a pizza ball and you just kind of keeping, keeping your, your fingers in a uh, half moon, you just gently work the dough in and around itself into a perfect little ball. And that as the dough is, uh, you know, under a, a damp towel, it, it actually will, will uh, this is just a marble top, um, create a little bit of tension. We're gonna do this just for about a minute or so. Right. And as you can see, we've got a perfect little, perfect little ball. Okay, we're gonna do this eight times. Uh, we're gonna poke the holes in them. So when I see you again, we'll be blanching off some bagels. Go. All right, so we've got, uh, we've got our bagels kind of worked out here. Um, as you can see, I've just got them resting on a lightly oiled pan. I'm actually gonna go into the pot onto here to let them drip. Uh, and then back onto the, the sill pad, you could put it on parchment paper if, if you want. Um, but like I said, this is, this is kind of where the fun, fun starts and we're gonna get our timer ready, right? And then in they go, so come on over. Uh, I mean, essentially, you kind of follow the dumpling rule, right? When they they drop in, they start to float. You want that water pretty, pretty aggressively boiling. And it'll start to come up here. Yep, there we go. Now we're starting to float on one side. We're going to cook it. We're about 30 seconds in. I'm gonna have you with me for the whole for the whole way here on these. As you can see, the, the bagels start to get bigger. I mean, this looks about the same size as a the pretty standard, you know, bakery bagel or bought bagel. But realistically, I mean, the whole process takes about three hours. It's a little bit of planning, and um, other than that, you've got a you've got a great bagel. All right, three, two, one. We're gonna flip. We're gonna reset the. We're gonna reset our timer. We're gonna cook it for another minute. I'm gonna do that times eight, uh, and then we're gonna get them back, we're gonna season them and put them in the oven and, and we're gonna go. One. Hey everybody, so um, I actually just took them out, like I said, about 20, 25, 20 to 25 minutes um, out of the oven, in the oven, uh, out, as soon as they came out of the oven, I put them on a, a, a rack um, so that they can cool, and uh, that, that's our finished product. Nice, nice crust, and I would let I would probably give yourself a you know 10, 15 minutes uh, before they <laughs> before tearing into one. Uh, they're gonna steam just like bread. So let them sit, let them relax. Um, we've made these a few times at the house already. Uh, you know what? They're they're amazing the day before. Um, however, you know you take put them in a Ziploc bag, make sure they're airtight. Throw them in the fridge, throw them in the freezer, pull them out. Um, you put them in the uh, put them in the toaster, you know, for however long, and they, they, they come right back. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll in, enjoying these later on today, um, and we'll we'll send a a little picture of uh, one, you know, all all uh, completed and, and done up. But thanks so much for spending the time with us this afternoon. Um, it, it's a bit of my treat, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Take care. Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, so. We've got our, uh, sorry, that was pretty exaggerated. <laughs> the, uh, we've got our bagels proofing. Um, so I, I like to kind of keep, thing, keep things moving. So typically when I'll cure salmon, uh, we're, we're doing it by the sides or by the whole fish. This, I, I actually just picked up a, a couple of fresh pieces at Artie's this morning. Um, salmon just came in. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So, sorry, my daughter's extra excited about this YouTube thing today. Um, so, just a couple of sides. I think this is good for home because actually, when you when you end up trimming this um, out, it, it's going to give you probably about ten servings of this. I mean, you want to slice it uh, slice it pretty thin. So. Uh, how we, we get started, right? I've got uh, kosher salt, coarse kosher salt, a uh, little bit of granulated sugar, and then my, my spice mix. Um, I like to use a 60-40 blend, 60% salt, 40% um, sugar, and then the spices. We're gonna use a combination of fresh and dried spices. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the seasoning mix uh, all together to make sure that it incorporates really, really well. Um, and then and then we're gonna coat the salmon in it and then we're gonna put the salmon in in the fridge uh, for about 12 hours right now if I'm going to cure uh, you know a whole side I'm gonna let that go overnight it's a much bigger piece of fish um, I also don't want to over cure it too I like to have you know a, a nice balance of, of you know I would say probably uh, 50% of the fish being uh, cured, and, and we'll see that when we when we cut it, right? So in, in with the salt, um, in with the in with the sugar. The spice mixture I have uh, is just toasted coriander seeds, caraway, and then yeah, I know chef's pantry. I've got some uh, dried uh, uh, lemon peel in here, which I think adds a really nice citrus uh, note to it. I'm also going to take those that have taken my classes know I'm like obsessive about. Uh, zest. I, I love the zest uh, of citrus. And remember, just like, like I said during the, the culinary classes, the, the zest is actually the oil. Uh, th this is the, the rind, right? So we're going to zest the entire lemon into this. And I want to make sure, and you can actually see uh, the, the, the oil on the, on the side of the bowl uh, from, the, from the microplane. You can smell it. It just smells fantastic. I mean, you can't smell it right now, but boy, I can. That was a really bad trip. Okay, so we're gonna continue to do this, make sure it's uh, all, all nice. And I'm actually gonna slice some of the, the, the lemon and, and put it in with this too, so we're gonna use the whole lemon. All right, and then I've just got some really, really nice dill um, that I'm just gonna dice up pretty finely. Stems and all. The, the, that's a good question. Uh, the, the stems up near the, the frond are actually very, very um, soft. So it's kind of like cilantro in, in that regard. That's going to go right into that salt mixture. What are you making? I'm making a cure for salmon. Okay. Now I'm just going to use my hand and I'm just going to move this around in here, see? It is pretty strong, huh? I'm just gonna really make sure that that dill is, is really worked into that salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now with the salmon, I've just got a plain glass pan, all right? Back up, Beanie. Not tonight. Okay. And I'm going to be very liberal, li liberal with this. Make sure it's all coated. Nice bed. Take a bed. Watch my hands here. And I'm just gonna make some thin slices of this. I'm just gonna add these right into this, over the tops of the salmon here. And then after about six hours or so, we're gonna flip it. Now, I'm going to wrap this up. So my fridge doesn't smell like salmon. And just a little bit of wax paper here, which is fine. All right, because I don't want it to stick. And this is going in the fridge. And then, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll let this go about 12 hours. We're gonna flip it halfway through. 
Um, and then that's it. And then tomorrow um, we'll do kind of a, a quick uh, smoke hack um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll smoke one half and then what we'll end up doing uh, is saving one half just for kind of a grab lux, more raw. But uh, that, that's a fast salmon. This recipe will also be up with the, um, uh, with, with the bagels. All right, everybody, thank you.